Hey, what's up, guys? It's Mr. Myasis here, and today I'd like to talk to you about the alternating series remainder. So we're looking at error approximations, and uh, really what we're looking at is the error is what's left over when we approximate a ser uh, when we approximate the sum of a series using only the first n terms. So if you kind of remember when we were talking about Taylor polynomials, and we estimated the value of a function using a Taylor polynomial and then we could create a Taylor series and that would give us the exact value well if we're only going to take part of it so the only taking the Taylor polynomial part then we're going to have some leftover right we're going to have extra that we didn't account for it's not going to be perfect it's going to be an estimate how much how close are we What's the leftover part? What's the remainder part? That's our error. That's how much we're not hitting the actual value, okay? So for an alternating series, it turns out that the error is going to be less than or equal to whatever the value of the next term after the first n terms that we've used to estimate that series. So let's take a look at a few examples, and hopefully that'll make a little bit more sense looking at this. So what I'm going to do, whoa, let's hit the desk, shake it. It's not an earthquake, guys. I just, just got to bang the desk here. So let's do the first example. Let's say we're going to approximate the sum of this series that I have here, and we're going to use the first six terms to do that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to write out the first six terms. So we're going to say that's approximately equal to one plus, oops. And we're going to go and plug in uh, 2 in there. We're going to have negative 1 half, right? Because it's 1 over 2 factorial plus 1 over 3 factorial minus 1 over 4 factorial plus 1 over 5 factorial minus 1 over 6 factorial, okay? So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this here in a calculator to calculate that out. And that's going to give me 0.6319. I'm going to put an extra. I'm going to put an extra value here just to show you what we're doing and um, re remind you that I will remind you. Let me just get rid of this here. Buddy of mine from uh, my AP read. Remind you that um, we are all going to go four decimal places in in a. Uh, in calculus, three decimal, three decimal places in calculus, right? So six, three, two. All right, find the upper bound for the remainder for the approximation from example one. So this is this is my estimation. Now I have an amount of error. There are a lot of values in there that I didn't take in consideration because remember this series is infinite. So all all of that stuff, the difference between all of that and what I have is going to be less than or equal to the value of my next term. So all I'm going to do is take my next term. So I know by using this alternating series remainder that my remainder is going to be less than or equal to whatever the next term was, which was 1 over 7 factorial. And 1 over 7 factorial calculates out to 0 0.000198. So this is our upper bound for the remainder for our approximation. This is, this is our error. So we're going to go and find the upper and lower bounds for the actual sum. So what does that mean, the actual sum? Well, I don't know what the actual sum is. But I do know that the actual sum is going to be somewhere between 0 0.63194, because that's what I calculated it to be. Uh, I approximated it to be for the first six terms. And that actual value, let me go and write this series in here. The actual value of that's going to be between my lower bound of 0.63194, which, which is what I got for the first six terms, plus anything I have left over. Well, what do I have left over? at least as much as this value plus this value. So I'm going to add those two together. In 
for those of you um, that have taken statistics, AP statistics, you can kind of relate this to something like a margin of error. All right. So we've got an, a lower bound and an upper bound. It's going to be as low as this because that's what I estimated it to be for the first six terms and as high as this because that's the first six terms plus the error that I have using that sixth term. So let's go ahead and, and do another example here. Let's suppose I want to approximate this, the value of this series with an error that's less than 0 0.001. Well, if I know that this is an alternating series and the remainder is going to the remainder is going to be less than or equal to uh, the nth plus one term, really what I got to do is I got to find which term is going to give me a value that's less than 0 0.001. Once I find that term, then I'm going to take everything before that, right? Because that's that's the term that I want to be the error less than. So I'm going to go ahead and write this guy out. Oops. I'll write a few a few of these guys out. Uh, my first term is going to be uh, 1. N equals 0. I'm using 0. Plug 0 in, right? Plug 1 in. And I'm going to get 1 half. Then I'm going to get 1 over 4 factorial. And 1 over 4 factorial is still not small enough. Minus 1 over 6 factorial. Which I calculated that out to be 0 0.00138. So that's still not less than 0 0.001. So I think I'm going to need to go one more. And 1 over 8 factorial. 1 over 8 factorial is actually 0 0.00024. So that's plenty small. The problem was that 1 over 6 factorial was 0 0.00138. And that's still bigger than 0 0.001. So this part is going to be my error. So I want my error to be less than this. So I'm going to go to this one. I'm going to not use that term. And I'm going to add up all of these. All right. So I'm going to add all those up. And I'm going to get my approximation that is that has an error that's less than 0 0.001. All right. So let's go ahead and use an elementary series to actually see what that value is. Well, Negative 1 to the n over 2 to the n or 2n factorial. This is the sigma notation for, we've covered this in, my, in the last unit. This is an elementary series. This is sigma notation for cosine of 1. Because there's no, this is like x to the n, right? x to the n right here, but x in this case is 1. So cosine of 1 is equal to, you know, well, approximately equal to here, 0 0.54030 when I throw it in the calculator. And notice here that we, in fact, are within 0 0.001 of our calculation in example 4. So in general terms, folks, uh, when we want to find the remainder, the error of an alternating series, that remainder is going to be less than or equal to the first unused term in that Taylor pollen in that Taylor series. So the first unused term is going to be our is going to be is going to whatever that value is, the error is going to be less than or equal to that. So you can write it like this that I have here highlighted. Um, it's going to be less than or equal to f of the n plus 1 um, derivative, x minus c, if it's centered around c, to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. Now that works for an alternating series. What happens if the series doesn't alternate? Well, we got to use a little bit of a different, kind of a harder, uh, kind of a harder method. It's not, not as easy as this one. And that's called the Lagrange remainder or Taylor's Theorem Remainder, and I will cover Lagrange's Remainder in another video. Catch you guys later. Good luck. My ass is out.